In this video, I want to introduce the concept of expectation values. Now, in the previous lecture, we introduced our sort of motivated expectation values by discussing how in quantum mechanics, you cannot necessarily pin down the exact, you know, the exact measurement of a particular property at a particular time for a particular system, right? We have to talk about these things as a large series of observations, a large series of measurements. What's going to be the average value of that property if we were to measure a large series of operations uh, or of observations? And the expectation value is the way that we calculate this. The expectation value is the way that we convey this information. So, um, so in the previous video, we looked at a specific operator, the linear momentum operator. In this uh, video, I want to be more general. So this applies to any operator uh, that you can think of. Any valid quantum mechanical operator has a expectation value uh, for a large series of measurements. So what I want to do is just look at our general eigenvalue equation. We have some operator, big omega, that can operate on a wave function and give you an eigenvalue, little omega, times that wave function back again. Right now, if we want to calculate the expectation value, there's a specific uh, integral that we have to solve. So to calculate the expectation value. And keep in mind, you're always calculating the expectation value of an operator, right? Because operators correspond to properties. You're trying to get the average momentum or the average kinetic energy, right? So you're always calculating the expectation value of the operator. So. Um, I introduced this notation in the previous video, but this is just how we denote expectation values. We basically put the operator that we're interested in uh, inside of these uh, these triangle brackets. So you put those in triangle brackets. This is your expectation value. And in order to solve the expectation value, you have to solve the following integral. So you integrate. You have the complex conjugate of your wave function. And then you have your operator acting on the wave function and you integrate this over all available space to your system, right? So you have your operator operate on the wave function. Uh, you come through with the complex conjugate of that wave function and then you integrate all of that to get the average value of your uh, of this property, right? So this expectation value corresponds to the average value of a large number of observations, right? So this is the average of a large number of operations. Okay, so this is your expectation value. So let's look at a uh, ge very general example of applying this or calculating this expectation value, right? So for this example, let's consider the following wave function. So consider the wave function. And like I said, in this one, I want to be very general so we know that this applies across the board, right? So the wave function that I'm going to give you is going to be um, C1 psi1 plus C2 psi2, right? So this uh, wave function that we've built is a superposition of two functions, uh, psi1 and psi2. Now, C1 and C2, these are two numerical coefficients, right? So we'll denote this. These are numerical coefficients. Right, and uh, as we're calculating the expectation value, I will um, discuss their physical significance at the end once we have the expectation value. But for now, just know that they're numerical coefficients that could be complex numbers, right? They, they, they're numbers, but I didn't say they're exclusively real numbers, right? So they could be complex numbers as well. So you want to keep this in mind. This is, uh, this is just numerical coefficients that we're throwing in there. Okay, so what I want to do is take my general uh, eigenvalue problem here, right? Take this operator that we're discussing up here, I want to calculate the average value of this general operator using this wave function, right? So let's do that. So basically I will have my notation here for the expectation value of this operator. And I know that I'm going to have to calculate the following integral.
right? So I'm going to have to calculate this integral over all available space. Oh, one more thing. One more thing about this wave function is that it is orthonormal, right? So this wave function is going to be an orthonormal wave function. So it's orthogonalized and it's normalized, right? So keep that in mind that this is an orthonormal wave function. Okay. So now I know I have to solve this general integral, right? We have an actual form for this wave function. So let's go ahead and plug that guy in. So we're going to have C1 psi 1 plus C2 psi 2, right? We're going to have the complex conjugate of all of that. And then the operator is going to operate on this side. So we're going to have C1 psi 1 plus C2 psi 2. All of that integrate over all space. So now as far as these wave, these different wave functions are concerned, right? Uh, psi one and psi two, these are a part of the superposition that builds our total wave function, but you can think of them as uh, relating to two different, uh, two different types of properties of the system, right? Just like with the free particle, where one of those functions represents the particle moving to the left, the other one represents the particle moving to the right. Um, this is just what's necessary to define our two state system, right? There's two states that it can exist in. And these functions represent two of those states. Okay. So, uh, let's go ahead and distribute this operator into the parentheses, right? So that's the only thing I want to do here. It's just, uh, distribute this operator into the parentheses. Right. So then we end up with C1. Right. So this operator is only going to operate on the function. Right. So you got oop, that's not a good omega. That's better. All right. So omega is going to operate on psi one plus C2. Omega is going to operate on psi two. Right. So that distributive property is only valid here because we know that the that the C's are um, our numerical constants, right? These are coefficients. So uh, we know that the operator is only going to really need to operate on these functions. Now, from our eigenvalue equation, we know what the results of this are going to be, right? So if we have our, you know, operator come through and operate on psi one, then it will give an eigenvalue associated with that state and the wave function back again, right? Just like we did with the, uh, the, with the free particle. We operated on one of those functions that gave us a positive momentum or a negative momentum, depending on which one we operated on, right? Same deal here with our general operator. So operates on psi one, it should give you an eigenvalue associated with that state. So let's do that here. And also I want to um, go ahead and, and distribute this uh, complex conjugate, right? So we'll have on this side, C1 star, Psi1 star, plus C2 star, Psi2 star. And then on this side, we have C1. Now we have little omega one, Psi1, plus C2, little omega two, Psi2. Right, D tau. Okay. So, uh, so basically what we have here now is the eigenvalues, right? The eigenvalues associated with each state, right? Now we can use, you know, just general FOIL method to get a couple of different integrals here. So I'm going to go ahead and write out the different integrals you get when you multiply these two, uh, these two functions together, right? So we'll end up with the first integral being C1 star, C1, omega 1. And then the integral there is going to be psi star one, psi one, d tau, plus c2 star, c1, omega one. And then that's going to be the functions that are going to be in the integral there is psi two star, psi one, d tau, plus c1 star c2 omega 2 integral of psi 1 star psi 2 d tau plus c2 star c2 omega 2 
integral of psi two star, psi two, d tau, right? So these are the four integrals that you get. I challenge you to, you know, if you don't understand where each of these terms came from, just use your general FOIL method on these terms above and you should get this same result. Okay, so now the fact that we have an orthonormal function, uh, orthonormal wave function comes into play, right? So if these wave functions are orthonormal, then that means that this function here where we have psi one star psi one, this should equal to one. If we integ integrate over all space of a normalized wave function that, or a normalized probability distribution, I should say, this should give us one, right? Here, if these functions are orthogonal, that means that this integral is gonna be zero. Same thing here, this integral should be zero because you have different states here. So if it's orthogonal, the uh, integral over all space of different states should give us zero. And then here we should have one, right? So this gives us a result for our expectation value that this will just be equal to C1 squared omega one plus C2 modulus squared omega two. And I'm, I'm doing the modulus squared because like I said, these could be complex numbers. So this C1 star could be different from C1. So I'm using the square modulus, right? Now, this is actually a pretty uh, interesting result that gives us a good interpretation of these coefficients in front of each of these states and the uh, expectation value in general, right? So if this eigenvalue is associated with state one and this eigenvalue is associated with state two, then these coefficients can be interpreted as probability amplitudes for each state, right? So let's put this here on this side. So these can be uh, interpreted as probability amplitudes themselves. Right, because this is the eigenvalue associated with the first state, and this coefficient is going to basically be a weight as to how likely that outcome is. Right, so if we think about this in terms of our free particle that had 50% of a pop probability of moving to the left and right, right, then that means that this would be, you know, the, the probability of it moving to the left, 50%, probability moving to the right, 50%, right? So, uh, so this can, so these probability amplitudes can be interpreted in the same way as we did with the Born interpretation, where these are basically your weights for each of these states, right? Okay, so this is a very general example. In the next video, I wanna get a little bit more specific and show an ex a specific example of calculating an expectation value.